Hi, I'm Steve Ritter, Founder and Chief Scientist at Carnegie Learning, and I'm here to talk about math supports for students with reading difficulties. This project is about providing supports for students with reading difficulties within their math instruction. Uh, this is collaborative work with CAST and is funded by a grant from IES. To set up the context, students in this study are using Mathia as a part of their normal mathematics instruction. Mathia is what we call student-directed problem solving. It's an intelligent tutoring system that provides students with complex multi-step problems to solve, as you see here, watches the students as they solve the problem in a way that makes sense to them, and provides feedback that's personalized and contextual within the context of that problem solving. We use knowledge component modeling to determine which problems to present. So we're selecting problems that are focused on the particular elements of knowledge that students need to learn. Um, and students progress from topic to topic based on their ability to master problems within each topic, which we call a workspace. Prior research uh, with students using Mathia has shown strong success uh, for students uh, with uh, poor, uh, poor reading ability. Um, this, this study, for example, uh, by the Chicago Consortium on School Research, uh, looked at um, students who are provided additional math instruction in ninth grade, uh, conditional on their performance on eighth grade math. Uh, so students below the median in eighth grade received double periods of math in ninth grade. Uh, this study showed really strong impacts on high school graduation, college enrollment, and even college attainment seven years later. Um, and what's important for this uh, particular study is that the impact was particularly strong for students who are below median readers. There wasn't anything intentional. This was a math program uh, in supporting students reading, but that was the finding that we found, that they found. Um, but one of the reasons that we think um, Mathy is particularly supportive of students with reading difficulties is that the process of breaking down mathematical reasoning into discrete steps as we do in Mathia um, naturally leads to an interface where some steps are essentially reading tests. So you can see here uh, in this kind of word problem that uses a uh, script diagram, uh, Donald's collection has five times as many postcards in it as Alberto's collection. You can see and circled here is uh, the word Donald, that name. Uh, the first step in the student's uh, solution to this problem is to select the person who has more postcards. That's not really a math question. That's really a reading comprehension question. You need to read the context and understand um, that Donald is the person with more because he has five times more than Alberto. Um, following steps will uh, will be more mathematically related. Um, but we always try and help the students make sense of the word problems before they start applying mathematics to it. And this is an example. Um, and we think that um, some activities that students do within Mathia um, are supportive of their growing reading abilities. But it turns out Mathia is also a reading test in this way. Um, the first uh, workspace in Mathia, the first thing that students do, we call a pre-launch protocol. Pre-launch because there's a space theme involved. Um, and uh, this uh, pre-launch protocol gives students problems that are not math problems. Um, they're problems that uh, we try to, in a fun way, uh, get students to understand the features and the functionality of Mathia itself, of the software. So, for example, I've magnified one of the questions that would be on the screen, which says, uh, ask for a hint to answer this question. What word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? If you think about it, the word is short. Short becomes shorter when you add ER. Uh, so that's kind of a fun riddle for students. They might not know if they don't know. They can ask for a hint, which will give them the answer. And that's scaffolding the process of students understanding how to ask for a hint within this software. Uh, there's another uh, uh, problem here that's highlighted uh, where we tell the student to try answering the question at least twice before asking for a hint. 
Uh, it says I'm thinking of an animal whose name starts with the letter E. Guess the animal. Almost everybody says elephant. That's not the right answer. Um, it turns out we used ermine, uh, which is very uncommon. And the point is that students get feedback uh, and they get they understand how feedback works in Mathia, and, and also the feedback will come with a message. For example, it might say um, elephant starts with E, but that's not the animal I'm thinking, with, thinking of. Try again. Um, so anyway, it was just a kind of created as a kind of fun way for students to understand how Mathia works. But in fact, uh, in prior work, um, we were able to correlate performance on that pre-launch protocol with outcomes uh, with student ELA scores um, on their standardized tests. Uh, and importantly, that pre-launch protocol performance on that does not predict outcome on a math exam, uh, which makes sense because it's not, the questions are not about math. Um, but normally within Mathia, we don't have uh, ELA scores for students. We only have those scores when we're doing a special research project with the school district. Um, and uh, so the fact that we can use this pre-launch protocol, which almost all students complete because it is the first module that they complete in Mathia, um, we have a pretty good idea of which students have reading difficulties without having to get those external ELA scores. And you'll see how that was useful in the study that we're doing here. I'm going to take a little uh, side trip to talk about a system called Upgrade, which we think is our real secret weapon for doing research of this kind. Upgrade is a um, field testing system that allows us to present students with a fair comparison, a randomized experience, and then measure the results. So it allows us to do randomized field trials within Mathia or, in fact, any other software. Uh, Upgrade is uh, free and open source. You can go to uh, upgradeproject.org and check it out. Um, and uh, if you do have a software platform, you can integrate it into your software platform. It runs as a service, um, and so it can integrate with any software. Um, from an experimenter perspective, you can see an image here of the dashboard. Um, one of our design goals is to provide easy web-based design and deployment. You don't need um, technical skills to define your experiments. Um, it allows you to do random assignment uh, and uh, particularly group random assignment within districts, schools, classes, or other groupings. Um, and uh, for adaptive software like Mathia, where students are moving through the software at their own pace, um, students are asynchronously reaching particular pieces of content. And so one of the things that Matthew is able to do is essentially start the experiment for a particular student when that student reaches the content or feature that is the subject of the experiment um, and manage all those um, assignments over time. Uh, and you'll see how that works in, uh, in a minute. Um, some features in the experiment I'm about to uh, describe, we actually did an individual uh, student assignment, but you can do group random assignment. You can also uh, define factorial within subject uh, experiments uh, and various other features. So let's talk about this study uh, um, looking at impact on students with reading difficulties. Um, this part of the study, we were most interested in understanding the aspects of word problem content that most impacted students with reading difficulties. Um, and so the uh, we, we aim to develop a practical style guide for writing word problems. And what we did was we developed a style guide along with uh, writing experts uh, and using background research. Um, and then we applied that style guide to rewriting problems for a small subset of the Mathia problems, two workspaces, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then we, um, we field tested using upgrade uh, these uh, rewritten problems as compared to the original problems. Uh, and then um, our intention is to refine the style guide based on what we learn, uh, retest on the original problems, and then generalize, uh, understand whether that style guide also applies to different kinds of word problems. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, we're talking about uh, 
potentially using AI to automate the process of revising uh, problems uh, to follow this style guide. So, let's talk about the style guide. Um, we did develop this style guide internally with our Carnegie Learning English Language Arts staff. Um, and that style guide was then used by five authors who also acted as reviewers for other authors' um, revisions. Um, and we, we did it this way intentionally because we wanted um, the content to reflect not a single author's style, but as, as well as we could, uh, the impact of following that style guide. Style guide's recommendations were um, nothing too out of the ordinary. You can see some of them using precise nouns, vivid verbs, consistency of language and imagery was really important. Uh, things like verbs, tense, and passive voice, and some particular, particular mathematical issues that we saw coming up in some of the original word problems, like avoiding the use of the word amount. Uh, when talking about account, so being careful about uh, amount can sometimes mean like the amount of things that you buy or something, but it also could be the amount of money that you spend. Um, and students sometimes get confused by those concepts. So we want to be uh, really careful to delineate uh, and separate those two concepts. Experiment design. So this experiment ran within Mathia uh, using random assignment uh, using upgrade. Uh, there were two workspaces. These are workspaces or math topics called analyzing models. Um, one of these workspaces appeared in, in seventh grade, and so the users were primarily seventh graders. Um, the other workspace appeared in eighth grade. They were the same uh, content and the same process, uh, but the numbers in seventh grade were integers and the numbers in eighth grade were rationals. Um, and the number of uh, problems that each student solved depends on that student's ability to master skills because Mathia is mastery based. And so students work through problems until they demonstrate mastery of the skills within each of those workspaces. Um, we essentially opened up this experiment for a seven week window. And within that seven weeks, over 12,000 students completed one of those workspaces. Um, and that includes uh, students who completed both the pre-launch protocol and the workspace during that seven week window. Um, so we were able to really uh, rapidly turn around a pretty high end experiment. As far as the content, this is the kind of content that students were addressing in these workspaces. Um, in this case, uh, the problem is your family goes to a bakery, you spend $10 on eclairs, you also buy several donuts costing $3 each. The situation can be modeled by the equation of y equals 10 plus 3x. Uh, and the student's task is to, we've broken down that equation, y equals 10 plus 3x, into its uh, constituent expressions, y, 10, 3x, 3x, and 10 plus 3x. Um, and the student's job is to drag those um, expressions or, uh, or numbers um, to the appropriate description of what that, what role that plays um, in the problem. So uh, the number three, for example, a uh, student would drag to the price of each donut. And you could see how this uh, task really requires students to uh, pay attention to the language being used. And this uh, problem did in our predictive model uh, load heavily on the student's uh, reading ability. The results were really uh, kind of stunning. We did not expect uh, the strong uh, results. Um, so students who um, had reading difficulties or uh, according to our model based on their pre-launch protocol performance uh, were predicted to have reading difficulties. Those students completed the workspace. This is the integers workspace in seventh grade. Um, those students completed that workspace in about 30% less time. They saved nearly 30 minutes in completing that workspace. Um, and the students um, also had improved math performance on all the measures that we looked at uh, in terms of their math performance. So it wasn't like we somehow encouraged them to rush through the problems and they weren't learning the math. Um, this was a, a huge win for those students. You can see there's also um, a much smaller but uh, significant impact on uh, students who were better readers as well. When we look at the rationals workspace, so this is an eighth grade, uh, you'll note, first of all, the scale on this graph is different. 
we do see the same pattern of results, but it's not quite as strong. Uh, at, but in particular, uh, students with reading difficulties are completing the workspaces once they get to eighth grade um, much faster than they uh, than they were doing in seventh grade, even in the original condition. And so um, it may be that when they reach eighth grade, um, they understand the mathematical underpinnings of this uh, well enough that um, the language doesn't get in their way quite as much. So you might be thinking, well, those original problems are really terrible. Um, and what we did was rewrite them so that they are perfectly understandable. But the truth is, I said this before, but this is your chance to kind of test yourself and decide which of these problems is the rewrite. So one, uh, one of the problems here uh, is the original problem. The other problem is the rewrite. Uh, you can uh, um, think for yourself. Uh, we found when we polled this uh, with, uh, with audiences that most people actually guessed the wrong one. Um, they say that the problem on the left is the rewrite. Uh, I think largely because it's shorter. Uh, but the problem on the right is, in fact, the rewritten problem. Um, and so the point is that it's not so obvious um, which problem was the original and which was the rewrite. The changes in the problems are, are subtle enough that I think having this formality around um, how to write these word problems is really important. So next steps. Um, analytically, we're using the a suite of tools called ART by uh, Scott Crossley uh, to understand um, the characteristics of the original and rewritten problems, which will help us identify quantitatively particular aspects that the style guide seems to have um, driven in terms of uh, um, the, the content of the rewritten problems. Um, and then also uh, hopefully identify which of those characteristics appear to be driving the effect to the extent that they vary across different uh, different problems that were rewritten. Um, then we want to generalize these results. We're in the process of uh, applying the same process to uh, different workspaces that have a different structure. They're still word problems, but they're aspect uh, they're addressing different aspects of mathematics. Um, and then we can refine the style guide to hopefully be uh, broader and more applicable to a wide range of word problems. And then finally, we're also working on training and prompting a large language model um, to be able to rewrite uh, problems according to the style guide. Um, and uh, we're also using those art tools to, uh, to refine the prompts as a way of measuring the impact of the large language model. And we will field test um, those automated uh, rewritten problems as well. Within uh, this overall research project, the task of rewriting the wording of problems is only one of the types of supports that we've been uh, testing within this grant. Um, we are also uh, looking at vocabulary support, um, providing students with, uh, with easy access to uh, um, a glossary of mathematical terms. Uh, we're looking at um, how personalization and familiarity impact students' ability uh, to read and engage with problems. And so uh, we've run a study where we're um, using uh, names within word problems. They're often character names, like you saw before Donald. Um, those names uh, are taken normally from a nationally representative uh, list. Uh, but what we're doing in that experiment is um, taking names from the specific school districts list. Uh, and then on the bottom here, uh, we're also looking at a, uh, a focus tool. So this is a tool that students can overlay on top of their screen to screen out uh, line by line, or you can make it bigger and look at two or three lines at once. Um, but um, the, uh, this is a common kind of approach in a lot of electronic uh, reading systems where the idea is to screen out distractions and focus just on um, a smaller chunk of the text um, at a particular time. And we will also be uh, field testing all of these things um, using upgrade with uh, students using Mathia. So thank you very much. Uh, I'd be happy to take some questions. Okay, uh, thanks everyone for attending. Um, um, if you do have questions, uh, please uh, put them in the chat. 
um, and uh, I'd be happy to answer them. One question uh, some people ask is about the style guide itself. Um, and uh, our intention is to share the style guide. I gave some kind of general indicators of things that were in the style guide. I'll say that the style guide was not particularly extensive. It was a uh, pretty, uh, you know, maybe five page uh, guide. Um, so not, not very uh, extensive at all. Um, uh, we'd be happy to share that, but we do want to um, go through a couple more revisions of the style guide. And in particular, um, as you saw, the results were somewhat different for the um, seventh grade and eighth grade cohort uh, who were doing uh, very similar problems, but at different grade levels. Um, and so we want to um, uh, test the style guide against um, an additional uh, additional sets of problems or types of word problems before we're kind of confident that uh, that we have uh, pretty general uh, recommendations. And at that point, we'd be happy to, uh, to release that if people are interested. Uh, and hopefully, I, I would say um, the style guide, like I said, is somewhat about uh, general English language uh, writing uh, and somewhat about uh, specifically writing in mathematics. Um, we do intend to apply that style guide not just to word problems, but uh, more generally to instructional text uh, related to mathematics um, and see also if the same kind of principles uh, result in improved performance from, uh, from that, uh, um, essentially rewriting textbooks and other, uh, other written materials. Um, I will also emphasize uh, if people, uh, if anyone listening is um, is developing educational software, uh, as I emphasized, uh, we have this platform called Upgrade, which has really been essential to allowing us to run large scale experiments um, in uh, in the field. Um, and if you're interested in uh, in Upgrade. Um, uh, the uh, link there is upgradeproject.org, um, uh, which will give you more information. Or again, uh, email me and tell me you're interested in that, and we'll uh, help you get set up and started with that. Okay, so I see a question say, uh, asking if MATHE is designed to help students with dyslexia, and uh, and also a question about how it's adaptive. Um, with respect to dyslexia, we have not. Um, specifically designed Mathia to help students with dyslexia. Um, and we have, um, so outside of uh, specific research studies, we don't, we wouldn't know if students um, have a diagnosis of dyslexia. Um, like I mentioned, in this particular study, um, we're able to um, identify students who have reading difficulties. Um, based on their performance on that pre-launch protocol, as I, as I described. Um, but uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have any specifics about where the, those reading difficulties uh, might come from, uh, whether it's dyslexia or some other cause like an uh, um, English language learner. Um, the, the working definition that we're using for students with reading difficulties is just students who score in the bottom 25% on their ELA uh, scores. Uh, but I will say like with that overall population, as you saw both in prior research and um, and somewhat in this grant, um, we are relatively successful with that population. Um, as far as how MAPI is adaptive, um, uh, I can uh, share a lot more about that. As you, as you saw, I think in some of the illustrations, um, one of the things that's different about Mathia is that from most systems is that we're asking students to complete multi-step problems uh, where uh, the steps may depend on each other. So you can define the problem. If you think of that strip diagram problem, for example, um, you can, you know, uh, put uh, one of the characters, either of the characters as the first bar versus the second bar. And so the, your kind of base bar versus the bar that's relative to it can change. Um, the way you work through the problem and the adding the specific quantities 
uh, can change. And Methy is adaptive in the sense that it understands which steps you've completed and how you've completed them. And it uses that if you ask for a hint um, or get feedback. Um, it's able to kind of understand the way that you are working through the problem and give you uh, hints and feedback that are appropriate to your particular strategy for solving the problem, uh, which is often the order that you're doing things in. Um, it also, each of the steps in the problem is associated with one or more uh, what we call skills or knowledge components, which are uh, elements of the overall competency, uh, mathematics competency for that um, topic in mathematics. Um, and that's how we uh, judge mastery. So the uh, fundamental kind of approach in Mathia is that students um, complete problems until they have demonstrated mastery of all the underlying skills or knowledge components. And so uh, different students will do different numbers of problems. And that's one of those uh, math outcome measures that uh, I alluded to um, in this study was that um, the students with reading difficulties completed the workspace faster. Um, part of the reason they completed the workspace faster is they did somewhat fewer problems. So they were able to uh, more correctly complete, uh, complete the steps uh, required to solve the problem, which led to uh, higher estimates of their mastery. And so they were able to master the topic more quickly. Um, so pacing and problem selection are also involved in the adaptivity there. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much uh, for attending. Um, if you do uh, have questions um, as a follow up, you can uh, email me at sritter at carnegielearning.com. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer any questions um, as, uh, as, uh, as they come up. Um, and again, like if you're interested in using Upgrade or seeing the paper or getting the slides, uh, email me. But I do think uh, hopefully the slides will uh, and this recording will be made available um, at some point uh, after the summit. So thanks very much.